Ah, the tomato. Is there a more versatile and rewarding fruit to grow in the garden? The taste of a sun-warmed tomato, freshly picked from the vine, is one of life's simple pleasures. But I also know that many of you find growing a good crop of tomatoes a real challenge. From yellowing leaves to stunted growth and the ever-present threat of pests, getting a decent harvest can sometimes feel like an uphill battle. But I want to reassure you my friends, that growing healthy and abundant tomatoes doesn't require a green thumb, just a bit of know-how. Over the years I've had my fair share of trials and triumphs with tomatoes, and I've learned that so many common problems stem from a few simple mistakes. The good news is that these mistakes are easily avoided with the right knowledge and a little bit of care. So, let's dig into the 8 most common mistakes people make when growing tomatoes and, more importantly, how to fix or avoid them altogether. By the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to enjoying a bumper crop of delicious, homegrown tomatoes. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Understanding your plant's needs is the key to successful gardening. And when it comes to watering tomatoes, it's all about finding that sweet spot. Both overwatering and underwatering can spell trouble for your tomato plants, but luckily, the signs are easy to spot once you know what to look for. Overwatering, a common mistake for novice gardeners, often leads to yellowing leaves. The leaves may also wilt, despite the soil being damp, a sure sign of root rot setting in. Root rot is a serious condition that can kill your plants if left unchecked. Underwatering, on the other hand, will leave your tomato plants thirsty and stressed. You'll notice the leaves starting to dry out and curl at the edges. The plant's growth might also become stunted, and you'll see fewer flowers and consequently, fewer tomatoes. So, what's the solution? Well, the key is to water deeply but infrequently. I find that watering deeply once or twice a week is usually sufficient but this will depend on your climate and soil type. A good way to check if your plants need watering is to stick your finger about an inch into the soil. If it feels dry, it's time for a good soak. And remember, good drainage is crucial. Tomatoes hate having wet feet, so make sure your pots or planting beds allow excess water to drain away freely. Tomatoes are sun worshippers and they need plenty of sunlight to thrive. In fact, these beauties need at least 6 to 8 hours of direct sunlight every day to produce a good crop of fruit. Now, if your tomatoes aren't getting enough light, they'll let you know. One of the first signs of insufficient sunlight is what we gardeners call leggy growth. This is when the plant becomes tall and spindly as it stretches towards the light. You might also notice the leaves looking a bit pale and yellow, and the plant might not produce as many flowers, which of course means fewer tomatoes. The solution here is simple. Choose the sunniest spot in your garden for your tomatoes. If you're growing in containers, you can move them around to follow the sun throughout the day. Now I know that not everyone has the luxury of a south-facing garden. If you're gardening in a shady spot or indoors, don't despair. You can still grow fantastic tomatoes with the help of some artificial light. Invest in some good quality grow lights, and your tomato plants will be basking in the glow, even on the cloudiest of days. Tomatoes are quite vigorous growers, and they need a bit of space to spread out and reach their full potential. Planting them too close together is a recipe for disaster, leading to all sorts of problems. When tomato plants are crowded, it restricts the airflow around the leaves and stems. This creates the perfect environment for fungal diseases like blight and mildew to take hold. And trust me, you don't want to be battling blight in the middle of summer. It can decimate your tomato plants faster than you can say Marzano. So how much space should you give your tomato plants? Well, a good rule of thumb is to space bush varieties about 18 to 24 inches apart. Vining varieties, on the other hand, need a bit more elbow room. I recommend giving them a good 2 to 3 feet between plants. Another important tip to improve airflow is to prune the lower leaves of your tomato plants. This helps to prevent soil-borne diseases from splashing up onto the leaves when you're watering. Just like us, tomato plants need a good diet to grow strong and healthy, and that starts with the soil. Now planting tomatoes in poor, lifeless soil is like trying to bake a cake without any flour. You might end up with something, but it's not going to be pretty. Tomatoes are hungry feeders, and they need a soil that's rich in nutrients, especially nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I always recommend adding plenty of organic matter to your soil before planting. This could be in the form of well-rotted compost, leaf mold, or manure. But it's not just about what you put in the soil at the beginning. Tomatoes are long-season crops, 
which means they'll need a bit of a top-up feed throughout the growing season. I like to give my tomatoes a liquid feed every two to three weeks using a balanced tomato fertilizer. This gives them the boost they need to produce an abundance of tasty fruit. And don't forget about drainage. Tomatoes hate having wet feet, so make sure your soil is light, airy, and drains well. As your tomato plants grow taller and heavier with fruit, they'll need a bit of help to stay upright. Without proper support, the stems can break under the weight of the fruit, leading to damaged plants and a disappointing harvest. Now there are several different ways to support your tomato plants, and the best method for you will depend on the variety you're growing and your personal preference. Stakes are a classic choice and are very simple to use. Simply drive a sturdy stake into the ground next to each plant and tie the main stem to the stake using soft garden twine. Another popular option is to use tomato cages. These are metal cages that you place over the plant early in the season. As the plant grows it's supported by the cage. For larger vining varieties you might want to consider using a trellis system. This involves training the tomato plants to grow up and along a system of wires or strings. Whichever method you choose, the key is to provide support early on in the season before the plants get too big and heavy. Chapter 6. Keeping Pests at Bay Organic Pest Control Ah, pests! Those unwelcome visitors to our gardens can cause a lot of damage in a short amount of time. Tomatoes, unfortunately, are susceptible to a whole host of pests from tiny aphids to the voracious tomato hornworm. But don't reach for those chemical pesticides just yet. There are plenty of organic methods you can use to keep pests under control and protect your precious tomato plants. One of my favorite methods is companion planting. This involves planting different crops together that have beneficial effects on each other. For example, planting basil alongside your tomatoes can help deter aphids and white flies. Another effective organic pest control method is to use insecticidal soap or neem oil. These are natural substances that kill pests on contact but are safe for humans and beneficial insects. And remember, prevention is always better than cure. Regularly inspect your tomato plants for signs of pests and take action as soon as you see any problems. Chapter 7. The Art of Pruning Tomatoes Pruning your tomato plants is a bit like giving them a haircut. It helps to keep them tidy, encourages healthy growth, and ultimately leads to a better harvest. But just like a bad haircut, over pruning or not pruning at all can do more harm than good. The key to successful tomato pruning is to know what to prune and when to prune it. One of the most important things to prune are the suckers. Suckers are the small shoots that grow in the joint between the main stem and a branch. These suckers sap energy from the plant and reduce fruit production, so it's best to pinch them out when they're small. You'll also want to remove any yellowing or diseased leaves. These are no longer photosynthesizing effectively and can harbor pests and diseases. However, be careful not to over prune. The leaves of the tomato plant are essential for photosynthesis, which is how the plant produces energy. Removing too many leaves will weaken the plant and reduce fruit production. Chapter 8. Harvesting Your Tomatoes. Knowing when they're ready. After all your hard work, the moment you've been waiting for has finally arrived. It's time to harvest your tomatoes. But how can you tell when your tomatoes are perfectly ripe and ready to be enjoyed? The first thing to look for is the color. Tomatoes should be fully colored, with no green shoulders. The exact shade of color will depend on the variety, but in general you're looking for a deep, rich red, orange, or yellow. Next, give the tomato a gentle squeeze. It should feel firm but slightly yielding to the touch. If the tomato is hard and unyielding it needs a bit more time to ripen. On the other hand, if the tomato feels soft and mushy, it's probably overripe. And finally, trust your nose. A ripe tomato will have a lovely sweet and slightly tangy aroma. Once you've harvested your tomatoes, store them at room temperature and try to use them within a week for the best flavor. So there you have it. We've covered the 8 most common mistakes to avoid when growing tomatoes, from watering woes to pest problems, and everything in between. Remember, healthy and productive tomato plants start with good soil, plenty of sunlight, and consistent care. Don't be discouraged if you've made some of these mistakes in the past. We all learn from experience and gardening is a journey of continuous learning. The most important thing is to observe your plants, understand their needs, and take action to correct any problems you encounter. Now get out there, get your hands dirty, and start growing the best tomatoes you've ever tasted. 
And for all your gardening needs be sure to check out the links in the description below for tools, fertilizers, and organic pest control products to help you on your way to a bountiful harvest.